this is James P. White from The Locker Room. Welcome back to the Jedi Jimmy Podcast. This is episode number 57. The Jedi Jimmy Podcast is back, baby. Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 1 and 2. So this is going to be a little bit of a long one. Buckle in. Episode 1. It's called Part 1, Master and the Apprentice. So it, this is actually the first Star Wars series that actually had a crawl at the beginning. None of the other ones had really a, a crawl like they do in all their uh, traditional Star Wars movies. And the crawl actually talks about how Soka got directions to find a map to help her find Grand Admiral Thrawn. And she got that from Morgan Elsbeth who, when she defeated her on the planet Corvus. Now... What happened was, that was Mandalorian uh, episode number 13. That was season number two. It was called The Jedi. Morgan Elsbeth was played by Diana Lee Insanto. Something interesting about her is the fact that she is the daughter of Dan Inosanto. Uh, he was one of the original students of Bruce Lee back in the day. thought that was kind of interesting. So in that episode, Morgan El- Elsbeth had control over the planet Corvus and um, Ahsoka went there and ended up defeating her and Mando helped but what uh, what happened was is that's where he got the Beskar spear now so the episode actually starts with a new Republic transport it's one of the new style transports it was a new class uh, but a new class Republic attack shuttle similar to the omnicron class attack shuttle that was used by the bad batch in the bad batch series approaches the uh, freighter and play it claims that they're jedi because they're using an old jedi signal because they want to talk to morgan elsbeth when the two enter the ship captain hale the guy in charge of the uh, freighter or the transport was confronted by Balon Skull and Shin Hati. Uh, you'll find out a little bit more about them in a bit, but Shin is actually a Balon's apprentice, and they both have large uh, orange lightsabers. So what happens is they end up killing the majority of the crew, including the captain, and how they killed the captain was he uh, Balon actually... Knighted his lightsaber right through his chest the same way that Kylo Ren did to Han Solo in the uh, Force Awakens. So now we jump to Ahsoka. She's on a sand, uh, Ahsoka. She's on a sand planet called Arcana. It's an old temple. It was actually a temple of the Night Sisters of Dathomir who were dark side witches. The Night Sisters were trained in the way of the Force, but they also used magic. Now, they... Darth Maul was actually the son of one of the Night Sisters. So that's kind of an interesting story there. Now, Ahsoka used a real cool force technique to cut a hole in the ground. She ignited her lightsabers, threw them into the ground, and using the force, spun in a circle and cut the ground beneath her where she fell into the the temple. Now, adjusting a series of stones within the uh, the temple, she was able to release an orb, which she believes to be the map to lead to where Grand Admiral Thrawn is. But now she's actually in contact with Huang. You might not know who Huang is. He's actually a Mark IV architect uh, droid. He's a professor. Huang was actually part of the Jedi Order. He was the, the architect. He helped every Jedi or youngling build their lightsaber and he also had an archive of every lightsaber ever built in the Jedi Temple. He was actually over he's over 25,000 years old. Now, when she gets uh, when she gets out of the temple, 
she is attacked by four HK assassin droids. They're very similar droids to the ones that were on a Corvus in the Mandalorian, but these ones, instead of using blasters, had like a, a static staff, an energy staff that was able to defend against a lightsaber. So using her two white lightsabers, she was able to defeat them, but they activated a self-destruct sequence, so she ended up having to run, and Huang was able to help her escape using the T-6 T six Jedi shuttle, but the, what happened was the self-destruct ended up destroying most of the surface of the planet in the temple area. Now, Ahsoka, uh, during the uh, rebellion, went by the code name Fulcrum, and she still actually uses that now during the time of the New Republic. They now they introduce Hera Syndulla. If you didn't watch the Rebels series, she is now a general. She was actually the leader of the Phoenix. She was Phoenix leader of the Phoenix Squadron, which was basically half the Starfleet during the time of the rebellion. Now, in the in the scene recording of the attack on the ship. Ahsoka saw this scene and she got Huang to actually analyze the lightsabers to see if he could identify who the force wielders were with the orange lightsabers since he does have an archive of all Jedi lightsabers that were created during the Jedi Order. Hera is actually played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead who's actually married this is an interesting tidbit to Ewan McGregor, who played Obi-Wan in the prequels and the Obi-Wan series. Now, Grand Admiral Thrawn, he was one of the last Grand Admirals left from the Empire, was believed to be dead in the Battle of Lothal, which involved Ezra Bridger, and with the help of Pergil, they're like giant whale, space whales that could travel through hyperspace, they disappeared, and that was a few years ago. So probably about five years ago. Now, on the planet Lothal, we meet Ryder Azadi. He is now the governor of Lothal. During the time of the rebellion, he was ousted as governor, and then with the free of Lothal, he became governor again. And he's actually played played by Clancy Brown, who actually voiced the uh, this sorry Governor Liz uh, Azadi in Rebel series as well. And they were leading a celebration to celebrate Ezra Bridger and the Rebels who helped uh, liberate Lothal. The mural behind him was actually a mural of the original crew of the uh, ghost who was instrumental in the freeing of uh, Lothal. And there was also loathe cats and loath wolves in the mural as well. Now, they called Sabine to the ceremony and she wasn't there. So they had to introduce uh, a senator now and his name is Jai Kel. He was actually a pilot in the Imperial Academy that the liberals, uh, that rebels actually liberated to bring to the rebellion back in the day. Now, Sabine was actually lives in an old communications tower that was where Ezra Bridger lived back during the time of the rebellion. Now, Sabine, as I said, was a member of the Ghost Crew. She was actually also a Mandalorian from the Clan Wren of the House Visla. She has a Loathe Cat, and it's actually a really cool Loathe Cat. And they're called Loathe Cats because they're from Lothal. Now, she had an old communication 
disc, like, you know, one of those communications that the Jedi used that had a message from Ezra. And he, he completed a message that he left years ago uh, during the time of uh, when he freed Lothal and escaped or disappeared. And the message was that he's counting on her to see this through. Now we jump back to uh, Morgan Elsbeth. She goes back to Arcana to find the map, but the whole temple was destroyed because of the self-destruct of the uh, droids. But she sends Shin Hati to Lothal because she's going after Sabine Wren, who uh, between the time of uh, the end of the Rebels to now uh, to the fall of the Empire, Sabine was actually Ahsoka's apprentice for a bit, and then they parted ways. Now, Sabine lives, as I said, in Ezra's Tower, and Ahsoka actually ends up taking the map to Sabine to help her translate it, because Sabine was very well known for her ability of art and translations. So... Uh, but while they were talking, they were able to identify who the Force user was. And it was Balin Skull, as I said. But he was a Jedi who disappeared at the end of the clones. So we're not exactly sure. We know he's working with Morgan Elsbeth, But they also believe that he could be like a, a mercenary. Now, since uh, Huang does have a record of every lightsaber ever made, he was able to identify his, but not Shin's lightsaber because she might not have been a Jedi. Now, a secret droid actually tracks Sabine for Shin. Sabine actually figures out how to, tr uh, to translate the key by turning the the orb on different axes is very similar to that, like of a Rubik's cube. And so the droids actually, a couple of droids attacked Sabine and she's able to defend with Ezra's lightsaber, but she did end up having to fight against Shin. And I thought that Sabine should have been better with the lightsaber because originally during the Rebels, she was trained by uh, Kanan Jarrus and Ezra Bridger, and she was pretty good with the Dark Saber uh, during that time. That's a long story. But even though she was kind of holding her own, she's half decent at Form 1 and Form 5 of Lightsaber Combat, which you can refer to on previous podcasts of mine. Uh, when I deal, uh, when I dealt with the uh, lightsaber forms, Shin actually ends up stabbing Sabine through the stomach with the lightsaber, and it doesn't look like it's a fatal blow because it's not dead center; it's to uh, to the side. She does actually survive it. It's not a fatal blow like that w that was done to uh, Qui Gon Jinn or even to Han Solo when they were stabbed through uh, the body with the lightsaber. But what's actually kind of cool about the end of this episode is they say this is for our friend Ray Stevenson. Now, Ray Stevenson uh, played Balon, but he actually passed away. The actor actually passed away back in May. I thought that was really cool. Now, episode number two, I told you this is going to be a long one, is called Toil and Trouble. Uh, Sabine was revived and uh, was looked after by a number of medical droids and also Huang. Now, Ahsoka goes on her own to try and find the, where the map is taking them. Balon and Shin end up going to the planet of Cetos. And there's a weird structure on the planet that they are able to place the orb in the middle of and that's kind of cool. And then they call for Morgan Elsbeth. Now, Ahsoka goes back to Sabine's house to see if there's any clues of where they went. And 
she found an HK assassin droid that was hiding, ready to ambush her. She ends up taking its head, so killing it. And Sabine was able to recover some of its memory. And it originally came from the planet of Corellia, where planet uh, where Morgan Elsbeth has uh, has a ship manufacturing yard or used to. Now, Corellia, if you don't know, is actually also Han Solo's home planet, if you didn't know that. Now, uh, Morgan Elsbeth ends up going to the planet of Cetos, C- uh, and she uses the powers of witchcraft, which she learns uh, learned from the witches, but it imitates the Force. So, I thought that's kind of kind of cool. And with that, she's able to use the orb to find where the where to find Grand Admiral Thrawn. And the place they're going to is called the Pathway to Perdia. And Balon brings it up because it's told in Jedi stories. So he's heard of it, but he never knew exactly where it was before this. Now, Balon says that uh, that uh, Mark will help complete his task. And that is the name of a new Inquisitor that we're introduced to. Because Morgan actually says the Eye of Sion is coming. Now, Balon's total quest, what he's out, out for right now, is total power. Now, Hira and Ahsoka end up going to Corellia, and on the planet, they realize that they're using both rebels and old Imperials at, to as workers on the planet. Hera tries to actually talk Ahsoka into teaching Sabine again. And then we go back to where Hoang is talking to Sabine. And he tells her she needs to start her training again. So we're delving into, are they going to get into Jedi training? I hope so. But actually both Ahsoka and... Sabine are struggling whether or not they continue to be master and apprentice. Now, in the office, <coughs> in the office of the planet Corellia, they have dis- they have discovered a number of ex Imperials that have been helped smuggling ships and hyperdrives out of the planet. They end up attacking Ahsoka and Hera. Hera ends up. Ahsoka ends up fighting an inqu- the Inquisitor Marek or Marek and and one of the HK droids. She kills the HK droid, but the uh, but Marek the the Inquisitor ends up escaping. Hera chases the ship that has the hyperdrive, and on her her uh, ship, she which is called the Phantom, she has Chopper. If you don't remember Chopper, he's from the the Rebels uh, series. He is a astromech droid. He's really cool, orange in color. And uh, they're on the Phantom, which is a uh, like a shuttle that uh, is used in the Ghost. I hope we see the Ghost later on. We've only seen the Phantom so far. So the Inquisitor escapes. Chopper was actually able to throw a tracking device. On the escaping trip uh, sh- ship, so they know where it's going. Now we jump back to Sabine, and she actually digs out her old Mandalorian armor, and she says to Ahsoka in a transmission, "says I'm ready to start again." So, with the help of Chopper's tracking device, they figure out that they're going to the planet Cetos, which is in the, in the Danab system. Ahsoka has agreed to become Sabine's master. That is cool. Now, remember uh, earlier, Morgan Elsbeth actually referenced the Eye of Sion. It's actually a huge ship. It's like a round. It's a round ship. It's actually kind of cool. Now, some of my uh, predictions going forward is, as seen on the trailer, 
In the next episode, I think Ahsoka will be fighting Balon on the planet Cetos because you kind of see a bit of that in the trailer. And of course, Ahsoka will retain, uh, will retrain Sabine and not only using the lightsabers, but using training sabers, which were basically big sticks. And either in the next episode, which is episode three, or episode four, we are going to see Grand Admiral Thrawn. And at one point, Ahsoka will end up defeating the Inquisitor, and Sabine will get a rematch with Shin. Looking forward to that. Now, I had a couple of uh, great quotes. They were both actually from um, episode one. Morgan Elsbeth said, Luck has nothing to do with it. Fate has decided our next move. And Ahsoka said, Sometimes the right reasons have the wrong consequences. I thought those were two really good quotes. I need to thank you so much for joining me on this podcast again. I look forward to seeing you next time when I deal with episode three. This was so much fun. I had This is going to be an awesome sh- series. I do need to thank my sponsors, of, of, of course, uh, Fire for Effect Productions, my buddy Army Chris. He helped me get all my equipment together, and sometimes I end up doing my podcast in his studio. And as well, I do need to thank Cryer Media, where you can find my podcast and many others. I need to thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next time, and may the Force be with you, always.